What's up everyone, Mikey Bell here with Outdoor Adventure Training, bringing to you another follow along workout. This is a quick 15 minute core routine called Ice Axe Abs. Mountaineering season is right around the corner and really is upon us now. It's early April, time to start getting that core nice and strong and stable for carrying heavy backpacks, moving on uneven terrain, and ultimately getting you to the top of whatever your climbing objective is this season. This is a quick body rate routine designed just to activate the core musculature, which the name is a little bit deceiving. It's not just our abs we're working, it's everything. This one also targets the glutes, the hip flexors, our obliques and everything we need to be strong, functional outdoor athletes. As usual, we'll open our mobile app, click on the Ice Axe abs routine, press start now, and we're gonna get guided through this. So I'm really big on dynamic warmups. While we oh are gosh. doing a warmup, it's gonna be less dynamic. We're gonna be focusing on various plank exercises. So we're just starting off in a standard low plank for 40 seconds. So just on my forearms, on my toes, but a lot to think about here. Two main principles we follow are drawing in and bracing. So drawing in, we're pulling our belly button up towards our lumbar spine. And just by thinking about that, you should feel really good engagement through the core. Bracing is essentially what it sounds. We're flexing actively, isometrically holding just to get that core fired up. So we're doing a short, plank circuit of four exercises, and then we'll be switching to a, another circuit of five low exercises that we'll go through twice. So transitioning to a low side plank, just rolled over onto my side, this other arm is up in the air. You need to modify if the side plank is too hard. Bend this bottom knee and press up like that. I'm gonna keep working with the standard variation here. So ideally, okay, we're doing four 40 second intervals here, so 160 seconds of holding a plank. <laughs> it's a really good way to get your core warmed up. Make sure we're keeping those hips up high, not sagging. And we're gonna switch over to the other side. So fancy maneuver here, just replacing the arms. Up to the other side, keep those hips up. So this is a body weight routine. Notice I have a plate right down here. I will be using that for at least one of the exercises. If you don't have a plate, use whatever you have. Grab a little heavy backpack or whatever you got, but also you, I'll show you variations to do this with just your body weight. Keeping those hips up, feeling that body temperature rising. <laughs> Make sure I'm pushing away from the floor. I'm not collapsing through the shoulder, hips up. Okay, and then we're switching to a reverse low plank. So just like it sounds, I'm uh, in the prone position, rather the supine position, up on my forearms, pressing my hips up, glutes are engaged, core is still engaged. I'm not over arching the spine, I'm still drawing in, embracing through the core. It's a really good way to get that posterior chain firing, along with our core musculature. Make sure you're breathing. We're almost done with this one, and then we'll get a short rest before we start the circuit. Okay, nice work. So just a short rest, and now we're gonna get start our circuit. So first, we're doing what are called seal sit-ups, which I'll first demo without weight. Second round, maybe I'll grab the plate. Then we're gonna do what are called mountain climbers, very applicable for mountaineers, we have some leg lifts, some external rotating knee ins, and ending with some scissor lifts. So a lot of these are gonna target the core, but as I mentioned, the hip flexors, which we do need to strengthen to be strong, stable mountaineer. So for the seal sit up, all we're doing, laying on our back, what I want you to focus on is keeping your lumbar spine engaged on the floor. So all I'm doing is sitting up as best I can, reaching forward, touching my toes and then coming slow on the way down one vertebrae at a time. Okay, so if we're just rocking through the motions here, you probably won't find it very difficult, but if we really think about one vertebrae at a time all the way up, leaning forward and then slow on the way down, 
starting with the tailbone, the sacrum, and the lumbar spine. When you get to this back position, really still draw in, press that lumbar spine down, and you shouldn't be able to fit your hand underneath, up, forward, and down slow. If you wanted to add a weight, we'll do that on the next one, but essentially you're holding the weight and sitting straight up. Without the weight, I just like to get a little reach just to kind of finish the repetition and the range of motion. So we'll be alternating between prone exercises and supine exercises. Next, we have mountain climbers. Generally, these are a faster paced exercise. I'm gonna slow it down for the mountain first round. Climbers. So all I'm doing, high plank, driving one knee at a time through the elbows, trying to clear that field goal post. If you don't have the range of motion in your hip flexors to get that knee forward, that's okay. Go as far as you can. The goal is I'm not letting my hips walk and rotate, keeping the core super engaged, pushing away from the floor, driving that knee forward. So if you wanna increase the tempo, ideally we're switching quickly, one leg at a time, driving that knee forward, all the way up to faster motions. You might start to feel this in your hip flexors, and that's good, that's what we're after. Of course, I'm big on hip mobility, but we wanna have strong hip flexors too. Nice work. Okay, transitioning into leg lifts. This is a really difficult exercise that honestly a lot of people do super incorrectly. And I love to start these from the up position. So it's like waterfall pose, my legs are up, my lumbar spine is grounded into the floor. Now I'm only gonna go down as far as I can while keeping that lumbar spine fully engaged. So for some folks, it might be like this. And there's nothing wrong with that. The second we arch our low back, we're putting a lot of stress in our erector spinae group. Really not what we're after here. If you have the strength, try to slowly lower to the floor, keeping good engagement, lifting all the way up. I do not recommend putting your hands under your butt. <laughs> That's cheating. I'd rather you just decrease the range of motion, work up here. Don't worry if your legs aren't totally extended. If hamstring flexibility is an issue, we got videos for that. Slowly on the way down. All the way up. Nice work. Okay, flipping back over. These are the best way to program your core routine. Gets the body temperature up a little bit more, kind of flip-flopping. So very similar to the mountain climbers, we're doing externally rotating knee ends. So rather than driving straight forward, I'm trying to bring my knee to the elbow on the same side. So out wide, back to center out to the tricep elbow area. Again, hip mobility might be an issue. If you're only getting here, that's okay. The goal is that we're externally rotating in some capacity. Hopefully you're starting to get a little bead of sweat going. I am. And it's not exactly warm in this gym. <laughs> really getting that oblique engagement, bringing it out to the side. One more. Nice job. Okay, flipping back over, and then we're gonna get a slightly longer rest before we do it one more time. Scissor lifts, so all we're doing Similar to the leg lifts, we might need to decrease range of motion. You can start in the up position. We're dropping one leg down at a time and we're alternating. So we're gonna go quite slow here. Make sure you're keeping that lumbar spine planted on the floor. So a modification might be, you might only be going to here if we can't keep that engagement. Again, if hip hamstring flexibility is an issue, Decrease as necessary. Hands can kind of go wherever is comfortable. We're gonna be digging deep here. Really love the long, slow holds. We're not moving super quickly here. 
That's when form <laughs> goes to the wayside. We're focusing on control and activation. You're done in three, two, nice work. Okay, that's the circuit. Super quick, just five, six minutes or so. Get a short rest. We're gonna go through it one more time. We'll increase the intensity just a little bit. But also, if you found that really difficult, take it easy. There's no need to go any faster. Talk about this a lot in our training programs, but it's really all about that brain body connection, not just going through the motions as quick as we can. That being said, getting into some seal sit ups here. I'm gonna grab the weight this time just to demo for those at home that wanna try this. So I'm not rocking the weight, I'm just sitting straight up. Now my head is going through the field goal post of my arms and then slow on the way down. Okay, in a one minute set, if you only get five or six reps, that means you're doing it right. Going super slow, should feel excellent activation through the abdominals, particularly the lower abs. If you're doing this right. One more really good slow rep all the way up. Slow, slow, slow. Nice work. Set that weight off to the side. Won't be needing that anymore. <laughs> Going into some mountain climbers. These are also a great exercise to get a little cardio going. I'm just trying to dry the knees. Notice my hips aren't up super high. <laughs> I'm forward in the plank position, driving those knees. And again, if that's too much, go slow. Make sure you're staying over the hands. People have a tendency to get back here. That's downward dog. <laughs> it's not what we're doing. I really love the, snow, the slow controlled motion because we're getting a lot of that hip flexor strength and we're also working on mobility. Think about driving that knee forward. Ten seconds left. In there. <sighs> nice work. You know the drill. Laying on the back for some leg lifts. This is a pretty quick intensive core routine so you're probably gonna get a good burn going. <laughs> Do your best. If you need to pause, take a little break, that's fine. Okay, nice and slow. Keeping that lumbar engagement. Really good core engagement. Notice we're going slow. <laughs> Talk about this in a lot of videos. But the goal is just creating that neuromuscular efficiency. Notice I'm not also going all the way to the floor and relaxing. If you do that, it's really difficult to re-engage and then draw the core up. So nice and slow with control, mindfulness. Back up to that 90 or close to it. Been running a lot. <laughs> My hammies are a little tighter than usual. Get one more. Three, two, one. Okay, flipping it back over again. Almost done team, we got this one and one more. And we'll call it good. External rotating means, high plank position. I'm not dropping and twisting. I'm really maintaining that plank. Bringing that elbow or that knee to the elbow. <laughs> You could call this a dynamic core stabilization exercise. So we're stabling as we move a limb. One of my favorite ways to target the core. And the more of that external rotation you can get, the more you're gonna feel it in those obliques. Just don't stop with the plank. 
If this gets too difficult, just hold the plank position. Sorry, that's not a plank position. Hold the plank position. <sighs> nice job. Saving the best for last. Getting into the scissor lifts. Here we go. Right up into it. Legs up and a 90. Drop whichever leg you'd like down. We're gonna go slow on my count. Hold it. Switch. And switch. I didn't say switch. Now switch. <laughs> One of my old football coaches used to do that to us all the time. Switch, we get into a rhythm, going at the same pace, extend it. <laughs> really feel that burn in the core. Again, keep that lumbar spine grounded into the floor. Really helps with abdominal engagement. Decrease range of motion as necessary. Almost there, team, hang in there. Nice job. <laughs> Hopefully you're warm. Your core should be super engaged. That was somewhat hard, I'd say, um, but a really fun, easy, in the sense that it's short, quick and dirty. Get those abdominals fired up. If you are training for big mountaineering objectives coming up, or even smaller ones up and down the Cascades, Pacific Northwest, or worldwide. We design custom training programs to help you strengthen and stabilize and mobilize all of the things you need to enhance your adventures to the next level. Hit us up at OutdoorAdventureTraining.com and we'll see you here next time on our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us.